I was expecting Mr. Somers. He'll come tomorrow. He's still upset. How is your mom doing? She's okay. She must be devastated. She's strong. Yes, she's strong. She can handle a lot. Mr. Somers, in the sentence by God, we do hard. At this age, he what sentence? Hundred years, fifty years, five years? What's that going to do? We can stop terrorism. They have got the wrong man. They always get the wrong man. I'm not a terrorist. I'm not Al Qaeda, Hamas, or whatever the shit. I'm an Indian. A peaceful Indian from the land of Gandhi, from land of non-violence. I have nothing against America. I love America. I love Americans. But Dad, we heard that recording. We heard you say those horrible things. Beta, try to understand. I'm a businessman. In business, you've got to play along with your customer. You know, to make them happy, to make them feel comfortable. Even if you don't always like to do. That's the way it works. American businessmen talk a lot of rubbish, don't they? Yeah, they do. You, you, know, you go and ask any of my customers, and they will tell you how I take care of them. Go, ask. You know, I've done business all over the world. In Europe, any airport I land, they lay out a red carpet for me. Yes, sir, a red carpet. Not blue, not green, not yellow. A bright red carpet. Because they respect me. They say, Mr. Aftani, you are the best. You always give us the best stuff, top quality. Look, all I was trying to do was to satisfy a customer. That's all. What can I do if my customer turns out to be a fraud? That's not my fault. I can't do business assuming my customer is a fraud. I trust my customers and they trust me. And this Reza or whatever his name is, he betrayed me. You know, I treated him like my own brother. Your mother made sore halwa for him. And what did he give in return? This. You know, Vita, I never had any feeling of animosity towards Pakistanis. I always treated them as my friends. But now, I have lost all faith in humanity. I lost everything. No point of talking about this now. I, you should have known better. Why don't you understand, Beta? I am not a terrorist. I have not done anything wrong. It was a game. A silly game, a child's play, that's all. Like the games he used to play. Remember, remember those toy guns and the toy airplanes, oh my god, those toy guns, they looked so real. And, and we used to play, and I would always be the bad guy. <laughs> and, and we used to fight, fake fights, you know, vroom, vroom, the airplanes flying, la -ta 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 -ta, the toy guns firing, and boom, boom, bombs blasting the pillows. <laughs> that was fun. Your mother would scold you, Veda Suresh, stop playing, come back, finish your studies. <laughs> she would say, you know how your friends envied you? Because your dad got you the best toys in the world, the most expensive toys. This babbling old man here is my father, Basant Adnan, and I'm his only son, Suresh, Suresh Adnan. I can't say I'm a proud son, rather I feel horrible for what has happened. He did some stupid things for which he'll end up the rest of his life in jail. Still, still I feel my father's story needs a second hearing. So I'll leave it up to you to be the judge or a jury in this case and decide if you really deserve this punishment. So, here is the story. Basant Dattan immigrated from India to England in the early 1960s. Got British citizenship and lived there ever since. All his life he was a businessman, a trader of all things. Fabrics, women's clothing, rice, tea. He could supply anything, whatever customer asked for. And now, 
He's accused of supplying weapons. No, not the toy guns or toy planes. He's charged of supplying dangerous weapons of mass destruction to the terrorists. Today, the jury at the district court found my dad guilty of all the charges. Attempting to lend material support to the terrorist attack. Money laundering, smuggling, and the illegal brokering of weapons. Today is a triumph for the Justice Department in the war against terror. I don't think that anyone can say that this country is not a safer place without Basanta Nani trotting around the globe attempting to broker arms deals. In all fairness, my dad actually did not commit any crime. He did not acquire any weapons. He did not sell any weapons. The product was fake. The customers were fake. In fact, the entire deal was fake right from the beginning. It doesn't matter. He clearly had the intent, and that's enough. You should appreciate that we intervened before he could locate a supplier, or if he could, he would have gone all the way to get the weapon. He's as much a threat to our national security as any other terrorist. Our mandate is to stop terrorists long before they can act. And to fulfill that mandate, we use any means at our disposal, including informants and undercover agents of questionable repute. Hey, hey. What are you talking about? What questionable? Look at my track record. Look at what I've lived so far. I should be awarded a medal or something. Here comes the main character of our story. Rohan, a Pakistan Cut it out, man. You don't have to introduce me. I can speak for myself. Be my guest. Oh, thank you. Folks, you know very well a story has multiple mm -hmm. sides to it. You listen to Suresh, you'll get one. And Dawn will give you the other. But I can give you the third dimension. So, hear me out before you jump to any conclusions. So what am I doing in this story? What's my role? <coughs> Look, I believe in one thing. A person is put on this earth to serve a purpose. And my purpose is to dig out those sleaze balls and scumbags and hand them over to the law. They say the long arm of the law will get you someday. Wrong. The fat and ugly arm of the law can hardly burrow into those dark and filthy tunnels where the worst of the worst hide. Only a mole like me can pull them out. I am the long arm they boast about. Without me, they'd be worthless shit. And without us, you would be dead, killed by your own people. Don't interrupt. <coughs> yes, I was in a tight spot. And why not? I mean, the risks I took, someday or other they'd have gotten me. Nobody's a saint. That's why I had to flee from Pakistan. It's the country of my birth. You see that man? That is James a U.S. Drug Enforcement Agent stationed here in Pakistan. His mission was to grab the most notorious drug lords in Pakistan. I helped him succeed in his mission. And now, I need his help. Take favors, bribe, 
killed. And the moment your job is done, goodbye. You wash off your hands and leave. Rohan, you are compensated handsomely for your services. I'll see if I can arrange for some more. Money? Is money everything? What am I going to do with money when I'm dead? Tell me, James, did you join the DEA for money? Hmm? Tell me, did you? I had my reasons. James was studying to become a priest. Can you believe it? Suddenly one day he found his calling from a book. God spoke to him. Get rid of drug peddlers from this world. I lost my brother to drugs. Don't do that, Anisha. Don't do that. It doesn't matter to James or to any American. What we go through is of no concern to them. James got what he wanted. Your technology, satellites, drones, choppers, fighter jets. Nothing worked in those mountains and caves. It was I who raised this life, went undercover and put out your high value target. And not just one. I gave you more than a dozen targets. Hardcore criminals. Without me, you couldn't touch a strand of their hair. Your promotion, your reward, you owe everything to me, James. I don't deny that. But you deny my right to live. Rohan, we made it clear right from the beginning we owe you nothing except the fees for your services as an informant. An undercover informant. Officially, we don't know you. You don't exist. The cover has flown. Just like the way Aisha took off the burka, it's all gone. There's nothing left to hide. So all your official talk means nothing to me. I want to live and I want Aisha to live. So, here I am, and I'm not going anywhere, except America. So you better stop making your phone calls. Sir, sir, please understand, those men are ruthless murderers. Don't waste your breath, Aisha. We are not going anywhere. Please go check out the kitchen, huh? find me something to eat. I'm hungry. Yes, of course. Sir, where's your kitchen? <laughs> Down the hall to the left. I caved in. Rohan was in line. If he stayed behind, he'd be dead within a week. Drug gangs in Pakistan showed no mercy for traitors. So I made a few phone calls. Within a week, Rohan and Aisha landed in America on the same flight as me. So, how do you like America? It's wonderful. I could have never imagined. It's so Clean, but not. I wouldn't go that far. Hey, James, what about my job? Did you talk to your boss? I did, and you're sure you want to do this? Trust me, I won't let you down. Okay, oh, but this time you're on your own. I cannot bill you out again. Informer? Again? Collection, agent, undercover agent. I've been working for the American government. Oh, not so fast, my friend. Dig in, get them some high value targets, prove yourself, and then maybe they'll give you a bit. Piece of cake. That's the expression, right? Depends on you. Hey, trust me. I'll blend in and pull out those comebacks, huh? They can't hide from me. Oh, I thought you were something else. Something safe. Don't worry, darling. This is not Pakistan. This is America. Here, this is the most civilized country in the world. Rohan commenced his career as a DEA informant, but his success was limited. Can't blame him. It wasn't his turf. Seems the uncivilized underworld and the most civilized country in the world was too foreign for him. Failure after failure made his life miserable. His family situation changed. Rohan knew he could not afford to go on being broke forever. You got to do something, man. Aisha's pregnant. I need a job. I gave you a job and you blew it. I didn't. Your men did. I gave them the guy and what did they do? They let him go and they couldn't even charge him. The man wasn't even a doper. He gave us the wrong guy. He was the guy. Your agents are too soft. They couldn't even squeeze a confession from that bastard. I'm sorry, the DEA is no longer interested in you. Come on, James. I saved your life, now it's your turn. Don't pull that card with me. I returned my favor. I owe you nothing. Aisha's pregnant. Congratulations. Thanks. You know what that means, right? I need some steady income. I can't let my child starve. Look, I have a few 
friends in a bureau. They're always looking for an informal. Okay. I can make a few phone calls, ask them around. Well, that'd be great, man. I know you want. That's all right. Hey, listen. I have this great business opportunity you might be interested in. A friend of mine from Punjab wants to import rice to America. Basmati rice. Excellent quality. Would you be interested in putting a few grand into this business? All you have to do is spare some cash or all the hard work. Huh? What do you say? I caved again. I put a big chunk of money into his business and he squandered it all. He sold the consignment to multiple customers, took their money and vanished. When the consignment never arrived, the customers came after me. I had to pay them to get them off my back. The whole deal cost me over 30 grand. That's when I knew I had to cut him off. Oh yeah? Cut me off? You were after my blood. You wrote that nasty letter about me to the FBI. And how long was that letter? Eight fucking pages long. You were desperate. You were dangerous. You ripped people off. Friend to have them killed. You used your FBI connections to intimidate innocent people. Extort money from them. It was my duty to inform my friends at the Bureau to cut ties with you. You should be glad you're not in jail. The FBI can't shit about your letter. I was their asset. The prize weapon with a master anchor who could lure in the biggest catch. His complaint could do nothing to me. Because right then 9-11 happened. And so Rohan became a hot property of the Bureau. His language skills and his uncanny ability to fit into target groups made him a busy guy. Soon he was scurrying the globe, hunting his prey. That's when he met the Santanani, an Indian barman trader from England. Rohan was trying to rope in a big catch, a suspected terrorist named Qureshi, who was thought to be behind multiple attacks around the globe. Rohan knew if he could hand over Qureshi to the FBI, his future would be secure. Posing as a millionaire businessman for the U.S., Rohan set up a meeting with Qureshi at an airport lounge in Dubai. <coughs> but Basant was there before him. Qureshi, why? Time is. These are quite good, but not like the ones you find in India. But tell you what, next time you're in London, you must visit my home. My wife, Pallavi, makes wonderful kebabs. You would love them. Yes, please. Thank you. Yes. So tell me, how is your business? Still messing with moments words? No, no, no. <laughs> I'm done with the garment business, you know. I made my killing. But what can I say? The margins have come down to single digits. You know, those bastards are getting stuff from Bangladesh and other Delhi places. No respect for quality. In London, Kureshi Bhai, Mains House wouldn't wear anything but the finest. You know, they would, they would, they would always go for the best. Price, no issue. <laughs> you know, they will say, Masan, you scout the art to find the best thing for us. And we love you for that, you know. But it's all gone now. We will now go for the cheap departmental store clothing. The cheaper, the better. No respect for quality. I can compromise my quality, you know. I understand. So tell me, what are you doing these days? Oh, many things. You know, I, I have invested quite a sum in a tea business. Yes, I am setting up worldwide distribution network. Bigger than Techlay. Those startups will be after me. <laughs> Oh, uh, did I tell you also that I invested in airline business in India? Yeah, but that was a blunder, Kureshi Bhai. One lesson I learned, never start a business that has a minister assigned to it. How can you make money when they control each and every decision you make? I was tired of bribing and finally I gave up. <laughs> you know, sometimes failure is good. Yes. It gives you the seal to succeed. Absolutely. You know, now I've started something big. Oil. Petroleum, yes sir, I'm making deals with some of the largest refineries in the world. <laughs> Sounds good. Good? It's brilliant, boy. So oil tycoons. Just imagine our tankers are shipping oil to each and every corner of the world. Especially to ports where oil is a restricted item. You understand what I mean? Aren't you taking too much of risk? No risk, no gain, Kureshi Bhai. Just think about what kind of money we would make. We? I can't imagine going into this business without you. No, Basan. You know, these days I maintain a very low profile. I cannot get involved in this risky game. To leave the risk to me, Kureshi Bhai, I will take care of everything. See, I just need you as an investor. See, if you sign in, other people would line up behind you. 
people respect you for it. Sorry, but sir. I cannot get involved. Listen, if I find someone that can help me walk, I'll let you know. Okay? Am I ready? Oh, not at all, not at all. We were just wrapping up. Prasad, we will talk more later. Yes. Okay? Uh, let me remind you once again, this could be an opportunity of a lifetime. Uh, how do you do, sir? I'm Basant, Basant Tadlani. I'm an old friend of Qureshi Bhai. Glad to meet you. I am Abdul Reza. Any friend of Qureshi is my friend. You know, Mr. Reza is a very successful businessman in America. He was born and raised in Pakistan. Karachi, right? Uh, you have a good memory. Karachi? Mm. Hey, that's where my in-laws are from. So that makes you my brother-in-law. Sala. <laughs> then you are my, oh, what do they call it? Jija Ji. Yes, yes, Jija Ji. Yes. You know what? I'm going to call my wife and tell her that I met a man from her hometown. She would be so happy. Right, right. Actually, she was not born in Karachi. Her father was. We were both born in India. You tell me. You know, we lived in the same neighborhood. She lived three houses down the road, you know, childhood sweethearts, you know. And when we decided to get married, our families were so upset. My mother was mad at me. Marrying a girl from a refugee family was absolute no no. But we didn't care. You know, we were young, as they say, love triumphs all. <laughs> so we got married, moved to London, end of story. But the business you were in? Oh, uh, well, anything and everything. I love dabbling many things. Ah, fantastic. Yeah, hey, you are my kind of guy. You know, I've done many types of business. You know, garments, fabrics, tea, missionary, airlines, arms, you just name it, I've done it. Arms? Yes, sir. I have supplied arms and armored vehicles to my customers in Africa, major countries. <laughs> President of Angola is a personal friend. Yes. Yeah, our man has a very high level of connections. Hobnobs with aristocrats and lots of London. You know, hey, you have some connections with the royal family, didn't you? Yes, yes. You showed me a Prince Charles picture with Prince Charles. Prince Charles? Yes, it's Prince Charles. Prince Charles is a very good friend. Oh, you want to eat it? Hold on, hold on. Yes. Prince Charles, say goodbye. Thank you. Here. Here. This is Prince. That's me. And that's my wife, Pandana. He was so young and handsome that he was a man at the time. This is impressive. Yes. Yeah, I supply tea to the royal palace. Mm. The best in here tea. Makai Wadi, Lakchu, Darjeeling, you just name it. <laughs> the prince loved my tea. <laughs> oh, did I tell you what Tony said? Tony. Tony Blair, the prime minister. He took one sip and said, this is liquid gold, my friend. <laughs> Tony Blair, your friend. You don't believe me. Okay, all right. If you want to meet Tony Blair, just give me 48 hours and I can get Tony Blair to your doorstep. That's a price. Uh, I'll keep that in mind. <laughs> hey, Basant is now into oil business. Yes. Basant, maybe Reza can help you out. Hey, uh, that's a brilliant idea. Reza South, trust me, you can make millions. Listen to my business plan and I can tell you all why I say this. Maybe some other time I have some important matters to discuss with Kureshi. Sorry, I'm sorry. Okay, uh, keep my business card. Mm. Yeah, and see, uh, this has my phone number. Okay, so call me anytime, mm. and and we can set up a business very very like you know. Um, did I tell you my son lives in New York, and I go there very often? You know, like if you want, we can meet over there. I'll call you. Okay, okay. Just let me remind you, Pudeshi Bhai, once again. You know, don't blame me later. Okay. Please think about it. Oh, it's time for me to go. Yes, thank you. Um, I will tell my wife about you, and she will be so happy. Oh, yeah. Basan, yes, 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 thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. <coughs> Who's this guy? An old acquaintance. Huh. We did some business few years back. But the poor guy is in a slump right now, desperately looking for some investors. Is he genuine? He is a big mouth, but he is a good guy. He won't cheat you. That arms deal he was talking about, is it true? He did something few years back, mm. but not as big as he claims to. You know, as I told you, he has a habit of exaggerating things. So, Mr. Reza, tell me, how can I help you? You must come to New York, Mr. Kureshi. My partners want to have a face-to-face -face meeting. That's completely out of question. I cannot go to New York. They won't let me in. I can arrange that. Sorry. I cannot take that risk. 
Tell your partners to come to Dubai. I will host them. Reshi was too smart for Rohan. He was a wanted man in multiple countries, and yet no one can touch him. Rohan needed something to prove his credibility. He was desperate. Post 9 11 world was not kind to him or his family. Rohan had to do something to earn the respect and to prove he was on the right side. So he shifted his focus. Who do you think I am? A coward? You make up your threats and I run away? No way. Don, man, this time they have gone too far. They vandalized my mailbox and wrote filthy stuff on my wall. I'll tell you, go home, fucking parkies. Yes, that's what they wrote. They painted terrorists in huge bloody letters on my wall and on my door. And the fucking morons couldn't even spell the word right. Do you know what they did to Aisha? Tell them, tell them what they did to you. They, they threw trash at me. They heard insults at me. They shouted. Go back, go back terrorists. I tried to run away, but, but they chased after me. Did you hear what she said? We are in danger, Don. We are not safe in our own home anymore. Of course I called the police. When they broke into my windshield, do you know what they said? Shit happens. Shit happens. Can you believe? They took down the complaint and left. And they did nothing, absolutely nothing. No, of course not. I didn't tell them anything. You think I'd blow my cover and tell them I work for the FBI? Huh? I'm not a moron. Don, 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 it takes time to get a high value target. Trust me, I am working hard and I'll, I'll get you your biggest prize. You thank me for that. Trust me, Rohan Siddiqui never fails. No, sorry, I can't get into that. You'll get to know in time. So now get these punks off my back. I can't leave my wife alone in this house anymore. Do you understand? Fine, just make it work. What did he say? He said he'd call the local police, have a squad car, make a few rounds around the neighborhood. Ron? Mm. Ron, let's go back. Go back? Where? Home. Pakistan. Are you out of your mind? We'll get killed the moment we land. I can't live here any longer. Not like this. Trust me, it won't be like this for long. Stop saying that. You promised me life would be wonderful in America and has it been? No. What has America given us besides, besides stress and anxiety? Rohan, we, we couldn't even keep our baby. Come on, not again. Calm down, Aisha. Calm down. Have patience. Everything will be fine. No. No, it won't. Lord, I, I can't take your life of thrill and adventure any longer. I just can't take it anymore. Where are you going? Somewhere. Somewhere far away. Where I won't have to live in horror every single moment of my life. That you can find such a place? You won't. It doesn't exist. Any place is better than here. No. Don't leave. Get out of my way. Don't do this, Aisha. Don't do this to me. Give me one last chance. I promise I won't fail you. Ever since we came to America, nothing has worked. You have failed at everything. First the DEA kicked you out and now, now the FBI will do. They won't. I will get Kuneshi. You just wait and see. No, you won't. You said yourself that he's too smart to fall into your trap. I must get him. If not him, then someone else. Someone as, as big as Kuneshi.
Hello, Mr. Adlani, this is Reza. Remember me? We met in Dubai with Yes, Kureishi. yes. Of course, Mr. Reza. I remember you. Hey, how can I forget my Salah? <laughs> hey, other day I was talking to my wife about you. She was ecstatic. Tell you what, next time you're in London, you must visit my place. I wanted to talk some business with you. It's now a good time. Huzoor, any time is tea time, any time is business time. So, are you interested in an oil deal? I trust me, you can make millions. No, no, not oil. You know, I had something else in mind. Something up your alley. What? Tea, garments? Hey, Reza sir, I can supply you the best mangoes. You know, how about mangoes? You know, I'm actually having them as I speak. These are the mangoes, best thing from India. Yes, heavenly. Uh, can't discuss this over the phone. You know, I want to meet sometime soon uh, in New York. Soon? Uh, how soon is soon? A month? No, 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 I want to meet sooner. How about uh, next week? Next week? Uh, trust me, you won't regret it. Uh, all right, I'll, I'll be there. Good, I'll call you later with the time and place. Okay. Uh, good night. Okay. Good this is the last one. I'll bring some more tomorrow. Who was on the phone? It was Reza, my Salah, your long lost cousin. Reza, mm -hmm. my cousin. What kind of joke is that? Remember I told you I met a guy in Dubai? He's from Karachi, your ancestral hometown. He lives in New York now. He's a big businessman. You know, when I told him about you, he was so happy. All said and done, Pallavi, our soil is our greatest spot. Politicians may think otherwise, but people of the soil will always feel for each other. You can't deny that. Why did he call you? He wants to do a business with me. Kureshi must have put in a nice word about me. I'm sure the Karachi connection has something to do with it too. Business? Yes. What business? He didn't say anything in detail from the sound of it. It's a big one. He wants me to be in New York next week for a face-to-face -face meeting. You are going to New York? Yes. But it would be expensive to fly there in such a short notice. Consider it's a cost of doing business, Pallavi. My customer wants me to be in New York. I have to be in New York. But, but how are you planning to buy the air ticket? I do not have anything in my balance and all my credit cards are maxed out. Don't worry, I will manage. You'll manage? How? Another loan from the sharks? They're not going to give you a penny, Basan, unless you pay off your debts. Pallavi, do you think I have a limited number of creditors? For the right interest, anybody would loan you the money. And when the business takes off, I'll pay them back in the GP. You don't have to go to New York. Why? And you don't have to get into any more of those shady deals. Shady deal? Pallavi, yes, I say, billionaires in America. Billionaires don't do shady business. Really? Then why wouldn't he talk to you about the business over phone? Why all this hush up? There could be many reasons. Perhaps it's a complicated deal that cannot be discussed over the phone, or maybe maybe there are other parties involved. I don't know. I don't have a good feeling. I I don't trust Pakistanis. Period. Come on, Pallavi, don't go parochial now. Businessmen have no countries. India, Pakistan, UK, America, they're all the same. Wherever there is opportunity, we are there. You know how they slaughtered my grandfather's family? How they burned down my ancestral home? My grandfather had to flee the country empty-handed, leaving everything behind. The men he trusted most did the most damage. That's what these people are, person. Traitors and backstabbers. Pallavi, that was a horrible time. During partition, people were killed on both sides. Hindus, Muslims, nobody was spared. People lost their mind. And this political leaders, religious leaders, they exploited them, brainwashed them. Now, see, you cannot cling on to the past and blame all Pakistanis for their ancestors' mistakes. The new generation is different. When you meet Reza, you will know. He's, he's just like your own brother. Trust me, Pallavi, I know people. Reza is a man of integrity, man of war. Why do you have to do this? You're not getting any younger, you know. <laughs> Stop chasing money and retire. <laughs> Your doctor said you should take rest. Basan, whatever little I make, it's good for both of us. We'll survive. 
no rest for me, brother. Not until I get back at it. You know me. I'm not a quitter and I don't give up that easy. But one thing I promise, I will make you happy. Please, enough of your promises. I don't want to be happy anymore. I'm good the way I am right now. Just stay home and let me live in peace. Let me please try to understand. This could be an opportunity of your lifetime for me. I cannot let it pass by just like that. All right, all right, all right, all right. Okay, okay, okay. Here is the thing. Please sit down. Listen to me, please. Yes. See, if I have the slightest indication that this deal is not good, I'm going to quit. I'm going to stand up and say right at Mr. Razor's face. No, sir, this deal is not good. I cannot help you. I'm sorry. And then I turn back, walk out of the room without even looking back once. You lie. <laughs> Marcus, I'm telling you the truth. If this deal is not good, that's exactly what I'm going to do. Without fail. Please. So, when do you have to leave? Next week. Reza will call me and give me all the details. Make sure you visit Suresh this time. Haven't seen him in a while. Alabi, do you think this meeting is the only thing I'm excited about? Of course I'll see Suresh and I'll probably stay with him for one night. I'll miss him soon, <coughs> He loves it. Hey, that's a brilliant idea. He would love soon, yes. Well, let me just, just one thing. You know, he will get a good story from me, but you know, this time there will be no mistakes. Thank you. Oh, well, let me make you extra pieces of stone halwa for your Karachi cousin. I'm sure you will appreciate it. <laughs> okay. Make sure you capture everything he says, huh? You shouldn't miss a single word. Don't worry about the recording. But I'm still not convinced this is our man. Trust me, Buses is not a clean guy. Hey, don't roll your eyes, man. A man who does business, that too in a legal business worth millions of dollars with a terrorist mastermind like Kureshi, can't be a clean guy. We can't arrest everybody in chess with Kureshi. This guy supplied arms to rebels in Africa. He supplied oh. some armored vehicles to the Angola government. It was legit if we checked it out. Hey, you know, how do you know he wasn't involved in the legal arms trade? This guy admitted to supplying several customers with weapons in Africa. And you know what goes on in Africa. All his trades cannot be legit. I can guarantee that. Hey, that oil deal he was talking about? 100% illegal. Anyway, you should be careful. If he's a smart cat, it won't take long to figure you out. <laughs> He'll figure me out? Dom, there's no man on this earth who could figure me out? Yeah, right. You don't believe me? Fine, you know? Go we'll hide next door, watch a master at work. You'll thank me later. Just make sure he stays within my range. Say something. Hello, Jack. Hello, Jack. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you see me? Okay, we're set. Great. Let's wait. You see, Dawn doesn't understand what goes on inside a South Asian head. We are wired different, we think different. That's why he needs me. Because my instincts tell me I am onto something, and this uh, nanny can be a ticket to a bright and prosperous future. There he is. Let me open the door and lead him into my lair. Come in, Mr. Nani, come in. <laughs> How are you? Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Reza. No, you are just on time. Yeah, see, living in England for so many years has its rewards. Huh. You know, I may be an Indian by birth, but so far, punctuality is concerned, I'm afraid. 100%. Good. Please have a seat. We have a lot to yes. talk. Oh, before we discuss anything, I need to finish my duties. Or a part. Here. Here is Son Halwa. <laughs> My wife made this specially for you. This is going to be the best soul halwa you ever tested. Come on, come on, please. Yes, okay, okay. And how is it? Just like home, isn't it? Huh? It's very tasty. Yeah, see? My wife would be so happy to hear that. Okay, 
take this box. This box is for you and your family. Oh, yes. Thank you. You know, my wife loves so much. Uh -huh. But um, don't worry about the calories. <laughs> Let them enjoy the taste of the home. You know, sometimes my my son loves so much. And my wife packed up the box for him. Good. I bet once your children start tasting this, they will give up chocolate forever. <laughs> So how many children do you have? <laughs> None. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, but you should work hard, my friend. Children are very important. They are the reason for our existence. They keep our lineage alive. I will be kind. Now, can we talk business? Sure, we can. Good. So are you interested in the oil business? I can still hook you up. Huh? <laughs> the other day you mentioned some arms deals you made. Yes, arms, tea, garbage. Arms. What deals have you done so far? Oh, many. Uh, tanks, armored vehicles, the heavy, the heavy ones, you know. I had them specially ordered. They are made of thick steel. Even a rocket cannot pierce them. But they give you very poor mileage. You know, you need a whole oil tanker to follow these vehicles around. That's why I said we can make it killing in oil business. <laughs> Whom do you supply? Oh, uh, mostly to African countries, you know, uh, like Angola and others, you know. Uh, and, and this, uh, these countries are very poor. See, they cannot afford to buy from rich Western countries. So they come to me. Good. Now, tell me, what can you offer? Oh, arms, what do you need? What can you get me? Anything can be arranged. Raise us off, you tell me, and I can get it for you. Only the best, top quality. Okay. Can you get me assault rifles, AK 47s, light machine gun? Piece of cake, they come by the dozen. But margins are very poor. <laughs> okay. How it says? Can you get me how it says? How? How? how it says? Yes. You know how it says? Uh, guns. You know, big artillery guns. Yes. Like cannons. 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 Oh, of course, I know cannons. Yes, yes. They're very cheap. But you can get the good ones from Sweden. Of course, very powerful. Reza Saab, you deal with me, and you don't have to get into the trouble like what Gandhi families did. <laughs> Can you get me RPGs, missiles? How about those? Just tell me how many of those you need. Are you sure you can get missiles for me? Reza Saab, there is nothing in this world that Basant Adani cannot supply. You know, I have a huge network of suppliers all over the world, and they're waiting for my order. One phone call. And they will deliver the stuff right at your doorstep. You need helicopters? You need airplanes? I can supply airplanes. Airplanes? Really? Yes, but you see the used ones, but, but they come with certified warranty. Now, come on. You cannot expect to buy the new ones. You know? Those are expensive. Hey, maybe you can start an airline business like I did. How about the submarines? <laughs> yes, yes, submarines can be arranged. Do you have a big enough dock where they can be delivered? You must be kidding. Kidding? No, sir. Basan Adani does not kid. If I say submarines can be arranged, they can be arranged. You just tell me how many and when. No, no, no. I don't want submarines now. No? Can you get me uh, surface to air missiles, you know? Like the ones you fire from your shoulder? Fire from your shoulder? That's risky. It can burn you. No, it won't. You have to know, you have to know how to use it. No. Didn't you say with the phone you want mangoes? Please us out. I can supply the best mangoes from India. The best Alfonso money can buy. You know, you must know mangoes are getting very popular in America. Your customers would love it. How about how about I send you a dozen grain? Just to try it out. Mr. Nani. Yes. Can I call you Basan? Yes, of course you can. Right. Okay. Although I'm of your father's age, <laughs> but I know you Americans, you like to call my first name, so I'm okay with that. Okay. But by the way, you know, importing fruits into America is very, very difficult. More difficult than importing weapons. Yeah, those agricultural folks and the customs department guys are very strict. But if you deal with me, you don't have to worry. See, I know people at the top, you know, just give them a couple of bucks and they won't bother you again. Basan, <laughs> I don't want mangoes. No? Okay. N not now. Okay. Maybe later. Right now I want missiles, missiles. rockets. Okay. Can we stick to that? Yes, yes, sure, missiles, rocket. Uh, by the way, you should know that Sivakase India makes the best rockets. During Diwali, we used to light up those and they will go up, up in the air high, very high, and they will explode with a loud bang. And colorful stars, garlands would light 
light up the night sky. Garlands? Yes. What are you talking about? The, the rockets, the kind of stick in a bottle, light up the fuse and they go like, whoa! Mr. Nice. we are not talking about fireworks. We are talking about missiles. Okay. Surface to air missiles. Okay. You know, like the ones you used to shoot down airplanes. Like stinger missiles, do you understand? Yes, I, I understand. Stinger, stinger missiles. Can you get me stinger missiles? I told you, NP can be arranged. Yes. Good. When can you get it? Just, just tell me how many you need and what size. Stop. Stop <laughs> taking notes. Listen to me carefully. Yes. Talk to your suppliers. Yes. Check with them what they can offer you. Then get back to me with the details. Okay. Maybe some sales brochures. Yes, yes, uh, sales brochures can be arranged. Yes, yes then. And yes, then sure. call me. Okay. I will discuss with my clients and then I can get you the numbers. Your clients? Hmm. Who? I'm sorry, I can't disclose that information. Oh, I'm sorry, you know, I should have asked them. Oh, I think it's time for me to go. Oh, yes, uh, you know, my son is waiting for me. Uh, did I tell you? My son lives in New York. Huh? <laughs> I'm going to spend some time with him. You'll be staying here? Yes. With your son? Yes. And sir, Nani, I hope you realize this meeting is confidential. Anything we discuss should remain between you and me only. Yes. If you want, I can arrange for a hotel. Mr. Reza, you see these gray hairs? They have been to too many meetings of this kind. Mm. You don't have to worry about a single thing. Okay, okay. Yes. I'll wait to hear from you. Yes. Just <laughs> give me a few days mm. and I'm going to flood your mailbox with sales brochures. They will become sick of them. No, no, <laughs> don't mail them. Fax them to me. I'll send you the fax number. Okay, okay. fax is fine. Yes. Okay, good. Sure, sure. I'll, I'll contact you. Mm. Uh, enjoy the soul halwa. And please let me know how your wife likes it. Uh, okay. <laughs> what? What's so funny? This is your guy. Your terrorist. Where do you say he gets weapons from? People. What? You think this guy is a joker? <laughs> no, sir. Don't let his apparent naivete fool you. That's his tactic. An old South Asian tactic. Treat your business associates like family. <laughs> Make sweet, funny talk to ease things up and then grab them by the balls and squeeze out your deal. I'm telling you, that is one sleazy old box. Oh, come on, Rohan, get real. This guy said he gets some arranged for you. Oh, and you fell for his charge. Don't you get it? He said. I asked him the summary question. He was trying to go one up on me, and he was testing me. Testing? Mm. Really? This guy thinks you want fireworks, mangoes. <laughs> Listen to me. He's nothing but a dud, a pathetic salesman. That's what he is. He said he could get the missiles. He said he had a network of supplies. He admitted to making illegal arms trade in Africa. You could have arrested him right then. Yeah, and then what? Get laughed out of court for arresting a humbug women's underwear salesman? You're wrong. He's not a garment salesman. That's only a facade. He is a dangerous arms trader. Proof. We need proof. I will get proof. Just give me some time. Take all the time you want. But no proof. No case. <sighs> to be honest with you, I don't trust this guy, Rohan. He's goofed up before, and there's a high chance that he'll goof up again. My gut tells me this at 90 guy is nothing but a buffoon, but hey, you never know. The bottom line is I need a catch by hook or by crook. My superiors are breathing down my neck. They're spending all this money, and they want to see results. They want to show their guy in the White House that our strategy is working. We can stop terrorism before it happens. So I'm willing to give Rohan a chance. Let him prove that Anani is indeed an armed seller to terrorists. If he can make a case, this will be our biggest catch since 9-11, and for that, I'm willing to risk some taxpayer money. Dad, what are you doing here? How are you doing, Beta? Hey, hey, you look thin. Working too hard, huh? You should have called. Why can't I come to my son's apartment unannounced? What if I'm like on or something, huh? I took that risk. Just to enjoy that surprise look on your face. Come on, give me a hug. Yes. 
So, what brings you here? Business meeting, huge deal, millions, you know. My clients want me to put me in a hotel and I said, no hotel for me. My son lives in town, I'm going to spend time with him. See, you know, such a long time, Peter. How's it? How's it going? Oh, wow. Well, she misses you, Peter. Peter, fights happen in families. But that doesn't mean they cannot stay together. Parents often agree with their kids or, or, or kids don't agree with their parents, but parents always want the best for the kids, no matter what. You know, you're our only son, Beta. We want you to be happy, that's all. Oops, I almost forgot. Hold on, hold on. Your mother sent your paper in. Ah, don't look, don't look. Turn around, turn around. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Now, here is Son Halwa. See, your mother said this for you. Come on, no. have one piece. I'll have later. No, no, no. You have to have one piece now in front of me. Your mother is going to ask me how you can enjoy it, huh? And good. <laughs> See, your mother would be so happy. Excellent. Now, let's go to a nice restaurant for a nice dinner. My treat. You know, I'm famished. I ate. You ate? So soon, I thought I would enjoy this evening with you. Ah, I do Dinner with my colleagues. That's all right. You know more. Yeah. Let me take a quick shower. You can order some pizza or something. You have a bottle of wine, right? You, we can talk. We have a lot to catch up. Yes. You plan to stay here tonight? Yes. I mean, why? Is it a problem? I've stayed here before. You have the sleeping bag, don't you? I don't know if I still have it. Oh, don't worry. I'll. Sleep on a couch or something. You know, I'm used to sleeping at very odd places. When I was a child, I slept on a straw mat. That's all. No sheets, no pillows, nothing. You know? Yeah, I know. I heard that story many times. Actually, you take the bed, I'll sleep here. Let me find a seat. Beta, I think you should start thinking about getting settled. <coughs> Get a bit organized. I am settled. You call this settled? You don't eat at home. You don't know where your things are. No, no, no. This is not acceptable. Now, you should start thinking about getting married, having a family. Okay, do you have a girlfriend? Okay. If not, if not, just let us know. You know, we'll arrange a nice girl for you. We'll fix up something. Hey, you remember Deepa? Ananda's daughter. She's very nice. We all like her. Vita, Vita, just give us a green signal. And we'll take care of the rest. We'll arrange a grand wedding in England. We'll invite all our friends and families from all over the world. Your mother will be so yeah. happy. You don't bother about my marriage. If I marry someday, I'll manage it myself. If I marry someday? If? Hey, what do you mean? You must have kids. You know, we want to see our grandchildren. Come on, have a seat here. Look. One boy and one girl. Okay. Shravan and Shali. Yes. <laughs> see, that, that's how I would name them. You know, I wanted to name you Shravan. Your, your mother said, no, she wants to name you Suresh. I respected her wish. But this time, it's my chance. You know, hey, Deepa is a very nice girl, very homely. Your mother likes a lot. You are our only son, Beta. And we always dreamt of a grand wedding for you. We'll, we'll book the hire. Yeah, you remember the hire Paul Ruben, Mina got married? That's the best. We'll have food, we'll have feast for three days. You will arrive on a horseback and please stop. Do you have any idea how much it costs to have an event at Grand <laughs> Don't worry about the cost, Vita. I will take care of everything. You will take care of everything? I mean, who are you kidding that? You think I don't know your financial situation? You're up to your neck in debt. You know nothing, Vita. This deal, this New York deal, is going to fetch me millions overnight. You just wait and see. Yeah, you and your deals. All your life, you just kept fooling us. Ah, I, I fooled you? Yes, of course. You fool me, you fool mom, you fool yourself. Your huge deals are nothing but pipe dreams. Thank God mom had a job. Otherwise we would have starved. How can you say that, Vita? I'm one of the one of the best businessmen in England. Whatever I touched turned into gold. Whatever you touched turned into a crap. The garment business went on a drain. That's because of those cheap sweatshop products. They killed many businesses. You couldn't keep up with the competition, Dad, admit it. I still remember those horrible days. You kept hiding and fleeing from the creditors while Ma tried her best to fend off those yes, vultures with endless lies. 
You pile failure after failure while Ma and I suffered and you didn't even care. Yes, yes, I had few setbacks. But I had my share of success too. You don't remember, Peter, you were too young. Hey, you remember the Bentley's? You love to ride those, right? Yeah, I remember the day they took away the cars more than the rides. You couldn't even pay the installment. Cash crunches can happen to any businessman. In business, you got to take risk. And sometimes you run out of luck. But I never let that dampen my spirit. I took even bigger risks. The kind of deals I've taken beta, I mean, you can't even imagine. I just kept it secret from you to, to protect you, you and your mom. Yeah, right. You don't believe me. Huh? You don't believe me. Okay. I can tell you. And I can tell you now. I made deals worth millions of dollars selling arms and armored vehicles, sophisticated weaponry, dangerous deals, deals so dangerous that no chicken hunted person would even dare to venture. Deals so secret that I can't even discuss with my family. You understand what I mean? <laughs> arms dealer, you. <laughs> He must be choking. You're bluffing, right? <laughs> you see this? <laughs> you, you can't do such dangerous things, I mean. You're not capable of doing such things. You don't know your dad, Peter. The kind of risk I've taken, if I tell you, you'll be stunned. Peter, there are people in this world, big people, important people, they respect your dad. They know who is Basan Tantani. Yeah, I'm sure they do. Hey, maybe, maybe it's time I introduce you to my business. Yes, as a business partner, Adnani and Sons. Yes, see, I always wanted to do this, a father-son joint business. If we were to stay back in England and join my hands, we would have been huge by now. But you wanted to come to America. I did not stop you. Your mother didn't like it, but I said, you know what? Let him go. Let him do whatever he wants. But hey, maybe it's not too late. We can still do it. How about how about you start with this day, this New York day? I'm working. See, that way you don't have to go back to London. You can walk from New York. I'm from London. It's going to be a multinational business. Let me try the sleeping back thing. This is an opportunity of a lifetime for me. And I need someone whom I can trust. Tell me how much money you make from that Wall Street job. This deal alone can make you millions overnight. Get that bottle of wine and I'll tell you all the details. Come on. Dad, don't want to get anything. Just have your dinner, go to sleep. I have a long day tomorrow. I met a man in Newark who wants sophisticated defense. These are very dangerous and hard to get. Have you heard of Stinger missiles? What? Well, to tell you the truth, I don't know much about this stuff myself, but I have people, I can find them that easy. They want a big shipment. Look. Dad, do you really expect me to believe this? A customer of yours wants you to supply missiles? Uh, uh, Stinger missiles? See, that's what they told me. Beta, try to understand I'm a businessman. If my customer wants something, I supply it to them. That's my job. Now what the product is or how it's going to be used for, that's not my business, it's theirs. But this deal is very complicated. It involves many countries, exports, imports, or legal stuff. Hey, maybe you can help me. You can help me settle the financial transactions, negotiate the deal, you know? Hey. You are the financial wizard of the family, huh? Dad, <laughs> I think either you're delusional or you're completely out of your mind. No, I am not. This is real. You know, if you want, I can introduce you to my business partner. You know, he lives in New York. He's a billionaire. You know, how I met him once I was going through. Stop! If what you tell me is true, I don't want to be anywhere near you. <laughs> you're scared, Beta. Okay, so, let me tell you, once the deal is done, I will get a nice apartment for you here in New York, a luxurious penthouse, 
and that will be our wedding gift to you. Beta, Beta, this arms business is very profitable with huge margins. For every armored vehicle we sold in Angola, we had 60% margins. And that's after all the payments, all the kickbacks, everything. Dad, I think you should leave. What? You heard me. Please leave my apartment. I don't understand. You're throwing me out of your apartment? Dad. I don't want to be associated with any of your business or your deeds. I have worked hard to build up my career and I won't let it go down just because of you. You are acting childish, Peter. There's nothing to be afraid of. I will take care of everything. I'm not acting childish. I'm acting the way responsible I should act. Now, please leave. And don't mention anyone that you have visited my apartment. I understand. I I I I believe. Uh, see, Beta, I don't want you to feel uncomfortable. <laughs> My clients have booked a hotel room for me here in New York. I can stay there. Not a problem. <laughs> yes, sure. Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, enjoy the soul hello. And please call your mom to let her know how you liked it. Okay, with her? Home. It, it won't be safe. This man is a criminal. A 
terrorist. Different kinds of fish like different kinds of baits. All you need to do to lure him in is use the bait he likes. Since then I have never failed. I have set up the perfect bait for a terrorist. He's dangling right in front of his face and he is circling around. But sooner or later, he'll take it. And then he's all mine. So if he doesn't take the bait, he's not a terrorist? He will take the bait. He must. And let me tell you, even if this man isn't a terrorist, I'll make him one. This is such fair. You have all the fun and exploration. I stayed here all by myself. Next time I'll go with you. And stay there in his apartment for a few days. Sure, of course. Suresh would soon move to a bigger apartment. Now the two bedroom. You can go then. Hey, maybe do this housewarming party. Huh? So what did you eat? Did you go out for dinner? No, we cooked. See, Suresh was complaining. He hardly gets good home cooked meat these days. You know, he's so very busy. So I offered to cook for him chicken curry and rice. You cooked? Why can't I cook? Well, since Suresh has been, but the meat was delicious. We dined together, and then Suresh opened a nice bottle of wine. We talked and talked until two o'clock in the morning. Balami, I had to drag him to bed. <laughs> we shared the bed. It is just like you used to do when he was a child. Did he like the soul before? Like? He loved it. He kept on eating one piece after another. Balami, I had to stop him. Otherwise, he would have finished it all. I told him to save some and enjoy for the next few days. <laughs> he, he became emotional. Emotional? You mean he cried? No, he didn't. He's a grown-up man, a responsible adult. <laughs> but I could hear it in his voice, you know. His eyes were moist too, he looked away, but he couldn't hide from my eyes. <laughs> Did he mention anything about the incident? Not really. No, he was sorry, I could tell. He apologized. Verbally. Pallavi, not everything has to be said in words. I am his father. I could feel his remorse. What you did is not good either, Prasant. Using your son as a guarantor without his consent is not something which you should be proud of. Pallavi, you know if I needed the money for the airline business and they would give me without a guarantor, that Suresh's money would have stayed intact. If only that son of a bitch minister didn't go back on his words. But you forged his signature, Basan. I told you several times I didn't want to. 
But I didn't have a choice. I would have gone to jail. Now tell me, can't your father expect a little bit of help from his son? You could ask. I thought he would understand. Now you know I said sorry to him several times. I said one day I would return all his money with interest. And that day is not far away. Anyway, how did the meeting go? Oh, great. Absolutely great. Your son Halwa did the trick. You know, Risa loved it. A big order is in the cards, you know. All I have to do now is call a few places and the money will be in the bank. Thank God. <laughs> then I must visit to the temple and pay homage to Lord Krishna. Yes, you do that. And when you go, let me know. I will come with you. We need our Lord's blessings. Oh. Oh. <coughs> Hello, Mr. Reza. Yes, you know, you will live long. I was just talking to my wife about you. Yes, yes. I knew it! I knew it! Yes, yes, I'm going to tell her actually. She's right here. Reza Sahib says his wife loved you so You know, yes. Hey, tell me what, next time I'll take some more. Hey, you know, Pallavi makes wonderful Palu Sahib. Yes, just like oh, yes. Yeah. Oh. Yes, of course, of course, no, no. Yes, I, I'll send you your brochures. I'm just waiting for the facts now. Yeah. You sent it. Oh. I'm sorry, I didn't check my messages yet. You know, but don't worry, you will have the brochures very soon. Yes, yes. But do you want to send it by fax? You will see the nice colors. Oh, oh okay, okay, all right. No, 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 no more delay, no more delay. You have it with million money. Yes, sure, sure. Promise, yeah. Oh, pay my regards to your wife. Okay? Okay, bye. Okay. Yes. What brochures? I, it's nothing. Some some medical equipment. I give him a very good deal. Medical equipment? Where could I get medical equipment? Lavi, I have my sources. I can find out that. You know, Lavi, what's for dinner? I, I, I'm famished. <laughs> Hello. Now? What is this, a kind of a joke? Joke? You think this is a joke? Basan fax me those brochures. Brochures? Yeah. You call these brochures? It's a pronounce from the internet. Come on, that's the best he could do. It took him more than three months to get those. If it was so easy, he'd have gotten them long ago. Now if I ask for real, full color, glossy brochures, he'll take another year. <coughs> Are you willing to wait that long? <coughs> Not me. Anyway, those are Sam's, right? Struggle two blowpipes. Yep. They are man beds, all right? He knows his stuff, but they almost obsolete. They hardly work. Ask him to get you something better, at least something like Struggle three. What about Igla, huh? That's a good one? Yeah, he can't get Igla, it's impossible. He said he could get anything from this bunch, anything I ask. Rohan, keep your expectations real. If you ask him too much, he may cut loose and bench. He won't. I won't let him get away so easy. Tell him internet printouts are not good enough. Okay. We need price quotes with detailed breakdown. Hmm. Once he gives the numbers, we can run and check his blog. It's a good idea. You know, I'll call him right away. These jokers don't look like they're going to give up so easy. I need to keep a close eye on both of them. Rohan is desperate. Hmm. Desperate people make mistakes. I better get up folks across the pond and keep an eye on our friend Basant. Because if he's for real, we don't want to lose him. Yes, 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 Mr. Reza. No, my, my men are working on the course. Yeah, you will have the numbers very soon. You have been saying this for months. You know, we have deadlines to meet. I have other suppliers in line. You know, you can't deliver, then tell me. No, I could have gone to anybody and they have the stuff on my doorstep by now. It was because of our commons I didn't do the favor. Yes, I, I understand. And trust me, I won't disappoint you. Yeah. See, unlike, unlike other, other suppliers, I don't supply junk. I only give you the best. You know, two years back, one of my customers wanted silk garment. I don't want silk. 
Mr. Adnani. I want my man pads. What? Man what? Man pads. Man portable air defense system. Shoulder launch surface to air missiles. SL SAM. Yeah, yeah, man, 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 man pads. <laughs> SL SAM. I understand. Yes. Yes. Listen to me carefully, Mr. Adnani. Yes. You have only one week. If you can't deliver in a week, the deal is off. Do you understand? No, no, I understand. It's the, the things you ask is still difficult to get. And it's costing me a lot of money. I need some reimbursement. Mm, sorry, no money until I have the numbers. If your numbers are good, then we'll talk about money. Good night. He is driving me crazy. Why? Doesn't he like your products? No, he likes it. He likes it. He's just, he keeps asking for more, more samples, more stuff. <laughs> well, look, this is the problem with happy customers. They keep asking for more. <laughs> but you don't have to worry. I have everything under control. <laughs> Beta? Beta won't be a pleasant surprise. And whenever he eats, he eats those horrible American junk food. You don't worry about me. I'll take care of myself. Okay. You must be hungry. You wash up, I'll fix you something. I'm not hungry, ma'am. Of course he's hungry. Follow me. He has some aloo spurt on them. Give him some. You will die. You will die. You wash up. I'll bring you food. Okay, ma'am. Wait up. Just a minute. You know, the, the other night in New York, you're. My mother doesn't know about it. No, but what? That uh, I didn't stay at your place that night. No. You see, she would have been hurt. I didn't want to make her sad. So you liked her? No, not at all. I told her I had a good time at your place. I did. I really did with her. That one minor unpleasant incident is nothing in comparison. You know, you understand what I mean, right? And let me get the aloo paradas for you. Pallavi! Oh, oh, here comes the aloo paratha. The best aloo paratas of all England. You know? Hey, Pallavi, give him some alfonso mangoes I got other day. It's you. Tell me about mangoes. You know your father is a mango fanatic. You know Suresh doesn't like mangoes. Beta, you wash up and have your food. <laughs> Beta, I, I need to step out for a while and then I'll see you at the dinner. Okay? Where are you going? Uh, Something your check came up, you know. If you don't raise our he has been pushing me. If I don't deliver the stuff in time, he must just cancel the order. You know? So wait up, I'm sorry, I have to go out a little bit. And you know, I'll see you at the dinner, okay? Oh, I'll get a nice bottle of wine and we can talk and talk, okay? <laughs> well, this business still is killing me. This man Reza keeps on calling him every day. And your father keeps on running. You think you're good, beta? You would have to get cool. Stop him. You think I didn't try? But he won't listen. He said that this business will bury me. Ma, you know better than anybody else. This person that Dani's words cannot be taken at a face value. He can do anything to impress. And you know this business deal in New York you were talking about? He said he would be supplying some sophisticated electronic equipments. They're not electronics, Beta. Those are medical equipment, he told me. Whatever. He knows nothing about this equipment. He knows nothing from where and how to get them from. And what if this equipment is illegal? What if it requires special treatment, special license, special handling? If he doesn't follow the rule, he might end up in jail. Don't you worry, Beta. I'm sure he knows what he's doing. He's doing business his own life. Mark, trust me. It's impossible for him to get this stuff. This equipment. And this is what he's been doing all his life. Overpromising his customer and then fail to deliver. And this time, he's gone too far. He's dealing with the dangerous people and they won't forgive him if he fails. Dangerous people? But your father said that Reza is a nice man. A bit pushy, but nice. And he's from Karachi, my ancestor lockdown. Ma, I don't know who Reza is and I don't want to know. America is full of scammers, ruthless con man. They can do anything to ruin a person. And if all that tells me is true, I will stay away from these people at any cost. Oh my god. 
Teresa can be a fraud? A con man? I don't know. Dad should have done some research about his client before promising anything. Stop him, Mom. Stop him before it gets ugly. Of course, Reza Sahab, do you think I would come all the way here without your boots? I don't 
here we go. Yes. Oh, before that, here is the Balu Sari. You know, my wife made this specially for you. You know, a promise is a promise. See, you can have one. Thanks. Show you the books. That's all right. You can eat later, but I promise. Once you start eating those, you cannot stop. You will finish it all. But sir, please save some for your wife. Huh? Quotes, please. Patience, help us out. Patience. Yes, yes, I have it. I have one supplier who can supply me this side. So, uh, like a, uh, it's a, you can find like a rifle. You know, like Russian Stella models? It's Stella, not Stella. <laughs> yes. Uh, they ask me for 60,000 a piece. Sounds good? No, no. Stella won't do. Too many of fires, you know? I want something better, like a Igla, the needle. Oh, 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 why, why do you need Igla? I mean, the Stellas are so much better. Mr. Tani, my clients want Igla, and they won't settle for anything else. Can you get me what they want? See, anything can be arranged, but it's taking on time. Those Iglus are like... Igla, also known as the needle or SA18 grouse. Oh, yes, it's a needle, a grouse, I understand. See, and these are taking a little bit more time. They're back order. They're expensive too. No. Look, Mr. Rani, I can tell this to you now. I work for a very powerful and dangerous Somali group. They want the best for a special operation and money is of no concern to them. Okay. They want it fast. No yes. more delays yes. and no more stalling. Yes. You understand? No, no, I, I understand. I understand. Yes. Do you also understand that this is a dangerous business? One small mistake and we'll all be in jail. Danger is my middle name. Reza Saab, you cannot scare me that you see. <laughs> okay. Listen to me carefully, Mr. Nani. Okay. I want to do you a favor. You know, after enjoying those delicious so on, hello, and now this balusani. Yeah, balusani. Balusani. I owe him this much. I'm, I'm listening. I'm listening. <laughs> this is money. I could have arranged for this inside of myself. I don't need some. I'm a man who got into my profit. But living in the U.S., I have some constraints. My every movement is tracked. And any foreign trip I take, my risk goes up by a few notches. They want to know what I eat, whom I meet, where I go, what business I conduct, everything. That's why I need someone like you, okay. an outsider. Okay. Are you with me so far? Yes, yes, I understand, yes. Okay. Here, take this. Divina exports. They export a variety of products, but they specialize in Russian arms. Ah. Petrov is a contact person. Okay. He's based in Moscow. This guy should be able to get you what we want. Set up a meeting and yes. finalize the deal. Yes. Can you do that? Peace of cake, Reza Saab. You should have told me this earlier. I could have saved tons of money. <laughs> I gave you the opportunity to make your own no, deal. Yes. You would have made more money that way, but you blew it. Yes. We can't wait any longer. No, no, no I, I understand. Don't worry about that. So, uh, how many of those do you need? Maybe a dozen for now. Dozen? Mm. <laughs> dozen? I mean, how much money I can make out of a dozen? And each piece would cost more than $80,000. Eighty thousand. Okay, so eighty thousand. And my commission is not more than five percent. So for a dozen, I would make like forty-eight thousand dollars. For the tiny amount of money, you want to take this huge risk? No, 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 sir. You got to order. No, no. Yes, sir, Nani. We have never done business with you before. Yeah, but we can't place such a big order on our first day. What if your missile turns out to be a duck? This market is full of counterfeit products. They are cheap, third party manufactured to relax. If your missile turns out to be one of those, my clients won't spend it. Mr. Reza, one thing I never do is to compromise on quality. I always supply the best, only the top quality. Always. Okay, okay, okay. Look, this is what I can do. Get me a sample. Yes. One if you are with a launcher. Okay. If your product is genuine and of the quality claim to be, yes, yes. I will try to convince my clients to get you a bigger order. A hundred. No less than a hundred. Uh, see, uh, if you want, I can ship them directly to Somalia. No. You ship it here. Yeah. In USA, yes. Okay. And remember, you have to handle all shipping arrangements. Yes. End user certificate, yes. all paperwork, everything. You will not get anything from my side. Reza Saab, I've done it so many times, I can do it once again. But I cannot give you a sample without an advance, you know. 
Okay, that's fair enough. How much would you like to oh, pay? I would like 16% fan, so for a sample and a launch, it's going to be $16,000. I'll arrange for 75. Now, okay. how would you like to pay? Oh, I can check, would be fine. Yes. Uh, check. Why? You plan to deposit this in your personal savings account? No, I was just You don't have to give me the details. You know, just make your money transfer arrangement and I'll pay you right away. Okay. Sounds like a deal. Yes. yes. Now, remember, the moment you land in London, contact Petra. Yes. He is a busy guy and very difficult to get a hold of. Yes. I understand. I'll, I'll call. Don't worry about okay. that. Good. You know, it's a sound. I'm a very good feeling about this. Then I must thank you. Thank you. Thank you for helping me out. Okay, I'll, I'll see you later. Oh, don't forget the Babu Sahis. <laughs> Well, what do you think? Wish. I wasn't talking about the candy. At least he's delivering candy. You don't deliver this side. You want to bet? Or you bet a hundred grand. What more? Yeah. Give me the money and I'll give you the side. <laughs> you know what? But now you sound just like a nun. I think Rohan is on to something and his idea might work if our guy Basant cooperates, if you know what I mean. I'm almost certain Basant couldn't tell the difference between an igla and an igloo if he saw one. So I'm not worried about getting caught. What bothers me is if he bothered to go through with his actions, which would allow us to nab him here in this country. I'd arranged everything with my man Boris. But you know what? I don't trust Russians either. Standing here in New York, I can only hope he puts on a good show. Don't worry, my friend. Everything is under control. You got the Igor Maka? <laughs> it should look authentic. He shouldn't suspect a thing. It's as good as it can get. I trust even your best effort will be able to tell the difference. Great. Now let me warn you, this guy is kind of slimy. He acts like he knows nothing, but don't underestimate him, or else he'll take advantage of you and leave you looking like a fool. Lord, I wasn't born yesterday Eve. Make sure you make them complete all the paperwork. Again, we must make this look authentic. I have everything ready. Invoices, shipping documents, everything. He should give you an end user certificate. Make sure you get that. Ah, good. Oh, what about payment? Give him a bank account and ask him to make a wire transfer. We already paid him the money. <laughs> Fantastic. OK, your man will be here any minute now. I will call the soonest transaction done. Wait, what is your name? Do you remember? Well, you think I am a sure? But from the very expert that you serve, happy? You know, you could have given me a better name. I like that one here. Next time. But now, just work on your acting. Good luck. Come, take a look. This is 
I'm worried about you, Basu. Last night you were boozing again. You need rest. Don't worry, I'll be fine. Anyway, pack this box of son Hanwa and make sure you give this to Suresh this time. I wasn't planning on seeing him this time. What? You flew all the way to New York and not planned to see your son? How can you think about this? He's only concerned about you. He doesn't want you to get into any trouble. And for that, he'll stop seeing him. No, you see, I don't want him to get worried about me. If he sees me in New York, he will still think I'm at it. And then, he would panic. Explain everything to him. Tell him that you're not pursuing this deal anymore, that you are retiring, and I'm sure he'll understand. He's not a child. No, he isn't. All right, madam, all right. I will deliver your goods to your son. But, but only if I see. He's very busy these days. It's very hard to get hold of him. Maybe you should have packed another box for Reza. He loves you so much. <laughs> I don't have any more. Ah, that's all right. You know, although Reza is only my client, I kind of developed a liking for him. You know, he is tough, but he has this childlike restlessness in him. Kind of reminds me of Suresh when he was here. You remember when Suresh left the house to become a monk? He thought he would find peace in a monastery. <laughs> oh yeah, yes. I was so scared. But then he came back, didn't he? He realizes nothing like a family bond. Malavi, you should talk to him about getting married and having a family. I tried to talk to him, but he won't listen to me. He, he, me. Huh? he brushed me off. You know, Suresh has changed somehow. The other day I made his favorite heat, but he didn't even touch. America has changed him. America changes everybody. Changes their belief, changes their values. <coughs> you know, they think wealth is the only measure of success. If you're not wealthy, you're not rich, you're nobody, you're not worthy of any respect. But don't worry, Suresh will change again. He will come back to you, Pallavi. I'll pray that my client's Reza doesn't change his mind. I ship the sample to, that's going to add with the port. If he doesn't like it, I would be in trouble. Why wouldn't he like it? You worked so hard to get the best for him. I'm sure he'll appreciate it. Well, let me not everybody appreciates the hard work you put in to make them feel happy, go successful. You know, think about the time and effort you put in to make those balusahis, keel, or so on, you know. The person you're making it for doesn't appreciate it, doesn't tell you how much they enjoyed it. All your effort becomes futile, isn't it? You know what? Give that box of sonar to your friend Reza. Just he'll appreciate it. But you made this for? I know. You're right. I'm working hard for nothing. I haven't heard from Suresh's incident. I'm not asking for a thank you or anything. At least he could give me a call and say hi. Is that too much to accept? Pallavi, Suresh will call. Trust me, Suresh will call. When I give him the good news, when I tell him that he doesn't have to take care of us anymore, and when I tell him once again, Abdali family is going to be the, one of the most prosperous houses in London. He will call. This meeting is very, very important for us, Pallavi. Wish me luck. Set that as a valid reason to put him behind bars. 
until we can demonstrate that Hassan Hanani clearly intended to harm Americans by supplying anti-aircraft missiles to a terrorist organization, we don't have a case. Say no more. I know what to do. Thank you. I'm all set here. When's he showing up? Anytime, you know? Well, I'm in your closet. I'll take it from here. I got it. Final straw. The last leg. I need to stay cool and win this game. And I must win. I have invested a lot in this game. I just cannot afford to lose. The stakes are too high. If Basan steps out of my trap at the last moment, like if he doesn't show up, or if he shows up here with the police, if he realizes this was all a setup. I'll be ruined. Donald and his friends will throw me out of this country. No, no. No, I can't let that happen. I must succeed. Oh, come on, Robin. Focus. Concentrate. And you folks, wish me luck. Come in, Mr. Nani. Come in. <laughs> yes. Congratulations. You know, you've done it. Yes, the deal is done. Right. Just like you say, you know, the stuff is going to arrive at the port very soon. Mm -hmm. Mr. Breakthrough is a very efficient man. He has already been loaded on a cargo ship, but I have to... I have to oh, what are you talking about? The equipment is already here. Here? Yeah. Already? Yeah. Right here in front of me on the car. That box? Hmm. That box has our surgical equipment. Yes. Surgical equipment, yes, very funny. <laughs> Sterile surgical equipment, Reza Saab, very effective. You who are a genius, Mr. Anani. Yes. You know, I am amazed how easily you could get this stuff into the country. You know, you must have some good contacts. But to tell you the truth, I didn't know it would be here so soon either. Well, it's here now. You know, let's celebrate. I should have brought some champagne. Wait, some wait, wait, I have just the right thing. Whatever it is. Soul Halwa. Yes, yeah. your memory. I know you like this. Thanks, Come on, oh, have a piece. Okay. And the delicious one. Hey, have one too. Okay, I'll take a small piece. Mm. Of it. Oh. Oh. Delicious. Okay, now this box is for your wife. Yes. Thank you. You know, my wife loves your so much. I know. <laughs> now, go ahead. Open the box. Me? Yes. Who else? Open the box and hand it over to me. Else your delivery isn't complete. Look, I've already removed the packing straps to help you. Okay. Hmm. Should we wait for your clients to arrive? I mean, when are they coming? They'll arrive in their own time. We can't wait for them. Okay. Now, please, do me the honors and open the box. Okay. Oh my god! This is it! This is what I saw in Mr. Petrov's office in Moscow! You know, Igla S, range 6 kilometers, altitude 3500 meters, speed 400 meters per second. Hey, isn't that faster than sound? Yes, sir, supersonic. Now, lift it and slowly hand it over to me. Come on, don't be shy. You are not trained to handle this kind of stuff. You don't need training to lift a missile. It's not heavy at all. And it won't explode. Okay, come on. <clears throat> Careful now, man. Okay, good. Now, hold it properly. I'm holding it. No, you're not. You're pointing the tail upwards. I turn it down. Hey, don't rub it. Don't rub it. Don't rub it. Oh, just stay. Okay. Good. Okay. <clears throat> oh. <laughs> oh, Mr. Reza, mm. I hand you over world's best specimen of surface to air missile, Igla S. Ta -da! <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Nani. I accept your yes. offer. Yes. <laughs> Man, this one's a beauty, huh? Yeah? Yes. Lethal beauty. Yes. What do you say? Uh, Mr. Petrov said this is a highly popular, a highly regarded. Look, over here, Petrov's print off the serial number. Why do you think he did that? Why? Think. 
Mr. Nani, think. Serial numbers can be dangerous. Oh, serial numbers can be track, track. Yes, yes. Mr. Vikram is a very smart man. Very smart man. Yes, he is smart. So, do you think your clients will like this? Uh, that depends on how your baby performs. You know, go pick up that launcher. Why, you want to fire that gun now? No, I won't. Pick it up. Come on, sir. Mm. Oh. Come on. Slowly now, good. Okay, now hold it to your shoulder. Huh? <laughs> Not like that. Yeah. Let me show you. <laughs> okay, here you go. Oh, oh, okay. oh. oh yes. yes, yes. Now, this is the trigger. Put your finger on there and don't worry. There's no missile in the launch. Okay. okay. Now, this is the eye side, just look through that, okay? Oh, oh, oh. this is exciting. Yes, yes it is. Uh, come here. See those aircraft over there on the tarmac? Yes, yes, I see them. Now, yes. look to your left. You see that airplane taking off? Yes, yes, I see that. Now, aim for it. Yes. You got it? Yes. Good. Now, pull the trigger. Whoosh! Bam! <laughs> that felt good! What if there had been a real missile in the launcher? That jumbo jet would be up in flames! Mayhem everywhere! That's what my clients want! Mayhem! Your clients want to shoot down airplanes? Mm. Civil airplanes? Here in America? Yes. That's right. I thought you said they want this in Africa. No, no, not Africa. Here, they want to shoot down big commercial jets right here in America. Wow, oh, that would be... That would be... Awesome! <laughs> Tell me, what's... What if you could make five or six planes fall? Huh? What would happen? Yeah, the Americans would be shaken bad. They would go berserk. <laughs> what would happen to their economy? Will huh? the market crash? If the men can do uh, simultaneous, get few airports, you know, financial market would be finished. Wall Street ruined. People will flee America. Americans would think the war has started. Uh, you think it would be bigger than 9 11? Of course. You remember what those Arabs did in 9 11? They took two airports, Boston and New York. This time you gotta take more redundancy, you know. Which airports do you suggest? Uh, uh, big, big 15. Uh, yes, at least 10. Uh, the big ones. Uh, no, no, the busy ones. Busy ones like JFK. JFK is a very busy one. Hey, North, North is busy too, yes. yes. What about uh, the Chicago? Go here. Oh, yes, oh, yes. Chicago is busy. Chicago would be nice too. Hey, you should pick two in California San Francisco. And Los Angeles. Yes, yes. And ask your men to go this, go to these places a few days early to find some vantage point. You know, I tell them not to fly because they will be caught up in the air for security. You know, ask them to take the train. It's safer. <laughs> what time? Uh, I don't know the train schedules in America. You know, it's flying the right now. I wasn't talking about the train schedules. What is the best time to attack? Oh, morning, nine a.m. Like when everybody is asleep. Yes. But there are so many time zones across America, it will be very hard to schedule these things, you know. We'll, we'll figure it out, you know. What is the, what is the best day? Sunday? No, 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 not, not Sunday. Mondays or Fridays, yes. Those are the busiest days. You will have the most impact, you know. Ah, you are right. It will require good planning. Yes, yes. It, it, it will require solid planning. Yes, yes. You, you need more of this, you know. Petro is honored only 50, you know. You know, men need more, they need to practice, right? Even 100, at least 100, not even more. If you want, I can throw in the train for free. That would make my clients happy. Yes, see, I want to make my clients happy. Their success is my success. You know, my clients want a supplier who supports their cause, so I... I, I, I do, I, I do support their cause, yeah, very fine. I do support their cause, they're, they're doing something good, you know? These Americans must be taught a lesson. Who do they think they are? You know, they can go every part of the world and bomb and kill people. Innocent people? No, sir. No, sir. They think they have right to own everything. And nobody can challenge them. And they, they can do whatever they want. And nobody can do anything. No, sir. 
hit you know you, you should you should give them the taste of their own medicine hit them hard when it hurts them you know I, I will supply you with missiles more missiles some more weapons whatever you need you know just go let's go and blast those bastards yeah Mr. Rahani, don't move. Put that thing on the ground and put your hands in the air. What? What is this? Mr. Reza, what is this? Hands in the air now. Hey, I don't understand. Hey, hey, who are you? Mr. Reza, ask him to put his gun down. That down. Mr. Bassan and I, you're under arrest for providing material support to a terrorist organization. What? I don't understand. I've not done anything wrong. I'm a British citizen. You know, Reza invited me over here. You have a right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. You have a right to an attorney. If you cannot afford an attorney, one will be provided for you. Good work, Rohan. Hey, who is Rohan? He's Reza. <laughs> You're not? You're not Reza? You're not Reza? I trusted you! Oh, I'm sorry, you know, that long day ahead of us. No, Baker, how could you just do this to me? You know, how could you do this to me? I'm thinking you like my own brother! You bastard! You bastard! You bastard!
we can at least give these their due appreciation. It's all we have left. Can't let go to waste. Okay, Dad. Gotta go. What can I say? Let's try to be positive. Let's be hopeful. <coughs> I have been always positive in my life. I know bad things happen to me, but I never let that put me down. You know, you know I lost father when I was a child. You know my mother had to work as maids in rich people's home to make ends meet. And since 10 years old, I was doing some odd jobs. I tried to help out my mother. Many nights we didn't have enough to eat. We just drank water and stayed when we went. <laughs> but I never let that pull me down. I always aim for the top. You didn't tell me this story about grandma before. No, I didn't. It's a sad story. I didn't want to make you unhappy. You should have. I have to go, Dad. My waiting outside. Oh, all right. Beta, uh, when would I see you again? I don't know. Very soon. Very soon. Take care, Beta. Everyone. 